According to the NFPA, U.S. fire departments responded to over 14,000 high-rise fires per year between 2009 and 2013. For over a hundred years, no steel high-rise building ever totally collapsed, even after the worst of fires. Despite the tragedy of those that perish in the smoke and flames, firefighters could always enter steel frame high-rises, confident the entire building would not collapse, causing sudden death. The reason for that confidence is because high-rise structures are specifically designed to resist extreme heat for long durations. Some high-rises, such as the Dubai Tower, have experienced two major fires, yet neither fire caused a collapse. So most were shocked when three buildings were completely destroyed, which resulted in the sudden death of hundreds of firefighters and thousands of others on September 11, 2001. The official reports concluded that the fundamental cause of the destruction for all three buildings were from the fires. New York City, 2001. No tall building had ever collapsed primarily due to fire. But that's exactly what investigators believe happened to the 47-story World Trade Center Building 7 on September 11th. According to a three-year comprehensive building and fire safety investigation just completed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires. We really have a new kind of progressive collapse that we have discovered here. An Associated Press fact check confirmed it was fire and fire alone that caused the towers to collapse. Then, in 2017, a fourth high-rise known as the Plasco building in Iran also collapsed, causing sudden death to yet another 20 firefighters. So why, for over a hundred years and thousands of fires, were steel frame high-rises structurally safe, yet already in this century four have experienced a devastating total collapse? Let's take a look at some similarities. First, all four failures were sudden, with no warning. And the destruction was total. The fires caused explosive sounds. He was in an explosion. He was in the lobby, and it fucking, this, the third explosion, the whole lobby collapsed on us. You heard from far away, boom, boom. And you heard the boom, 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 boom. It was like it was if, if they had detonated. Yeah, they were planning to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. The movement was very good. 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 There's a smooth downward acceleration. The Plasco in Building 7 had similar debris piles. And the Towers and Plasco building had reports of molten steel. Regardless of any similarities, the key questions are, why do a few large buildings with smaller fires cause sudden catastrophic collapse, but larger fires on smaller structures that burn longer don't? Will the next high-rise fire be structurally safe or cause sudden death? For example, if this tower did this because of fire, then how do we know its replacement won't do the same thing? Is this tower too big to fail? Why wouldn't this tower suddenly collapse? Or maybe this building in a fire? And if this building did this because of relatively small ordinary office fires, then how do we know the same thing won't happen to its replacement? Or happen to this building? Or this building? Or any of the thousands and thousands of high-rise buildings across the globe? 
NIST discovered a new kind of progressive collapse. We really have a new kind of progressive collapse that we have discovered here, which is a fire-induced progressive collapse. Fortunately, those at the scene were well aware of this new kind of collapse, warning the firemen not to enter. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It'll be coming down. The building is about to blow up. Move it back. All right, guys. Sorry. We are walking back. There's a building about to blow up. The media outlets were told about it. I want to tell you that we are getting word from New York right now that another building has collapsed. I understand that this is a 47-story building. Uh, if I don't, do we have pictures of it? I guess that's smoke now. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the control room, please. But is that smoke coming from this third collapse? Okay, that that is what we're understanding, which makes sense because it looks like the sun is is going down. But uh, the heavy black smoke once again. Look at that. Hopefully at this point that building was empty, but I have no way of knowing that. But I, I'm, I'm hoping that enough people have cleared out of downtown Manhattan so that perhaps it wasn't as full as it might be normally around uh, 530 on a Tuesday. That uh, information, of course, take a look at that right-hand side of the screen. It's going down right now. There it is. Yep. It went down right there. The building owner certainly knew it. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. And the authorities also knew the towers would fall. I went down to the scene and we set up a headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. And it did collapse before we could actually get out of the buildings. Since the collapse was well known ahead of time, why can't they tell us today which high rises will collapse and which ones are safe? NIST concluded their tower study at the beginning of the point of collapse, jumping to the conclusion that collapse was inevitable. In other words, they stopped their study here. But they never analyzed or explained the critical event, that is, the actual collapse itself. NIST also discovered a new collapse phenomenon. Our study has identified thermal expansion as a new phenomenon that can cause the collapse of a structure. Shouldn't today's fire experts better understand this new phenomenon before we send in any more firefighters on yet another potential suicide mission? Life safety codes are critical elements of building design and fire protection, but the overall structural integrity during a fire is perhaps the number one life safety issue. Since fire-induced progressive collapses are becoming more and more common, all existing high-rises need to be evaluated to address this alarming trend. Once identified, warning signs should be installed in all structures that are subject to this same phenomenon, as there could be many more collapses if this trend continues. This new phenomenon of a fire-induced collapse no doubt is an extraordinary event. What we found was that uncontrolled building fires, similar to those we have seen in other tall buildings, caused an extraordinary event. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 was primarily due to fires. This is the first time that we are aware of that a building over 17, 15 stories tall has collapsed primarily due to fire. Of course, the owners and some others will ignore or downplay this new phenomenon, but they don't have to risk their lives playing high-rise Russian roulette. If these buildings did this because of fire, then firefighters around the world should stop entering any high-rises until these extraordinary events are better understood and the physics can be demonstrated with real models for all to understand because firefighters deserve to know whether tall buildings will be structurally safe or cause sudden death. Their lives depend on it.